And Florence sees thousands of people evacuate Western Canada as wildfire rages. And in the sport, Ogun State Governor Dakwa Biadu hails Toby Amusha for outstanding performance in Jamaica. Now, the details. I'm Sarah Adesoya. The Lagos State Government will continue to collaborate and support the Nigerian Armed Forces to ensure safety of lives and property of residents and ensure continuous economic growth of the state. Governor Babajidi Sumulu made the commitment when the Chief of Defense Staff, Christopher Musa, led his entourage on a Kati visit to Lagos House Marina. Governor Sumulu would describe Lagos as the safest state in the country, commended the professionalism and the leadership style of Chief of Defense Staff in tackling insecurity in the country, while appealing for more slots for Lagos indigents and the ongoing army recruitment exercise. The governor urged you to take advantage of opportunity and apply to serve the fatherland with a promise to continually support the army for more effective operations. Let me say that for us as a government, we know too well what are the challenges. We understand that we're in government to serve the people. We're in government to ensure that life becomes a lot more meaningful. You know, life becomes in a lot more um, like what we say. It should be the greatest good for the greatest number. Let us use governance, you know, as a tool for development that is center, centrally driven by people's interests. Earlier, the Chief of Defense Staff, Christopher Musa, appreciated the, the warm reception of the governor towards the Duke and Duchess of Sussex, Prince Harry and Meghan Markle, who he noted were excited about visiting Nigeria for the first time. General Musa solicited the support of the state government towards construction of the Invictus Game Center to cater for the mental health of army officers, noting that over 1,000 officers are presently injured and in various hospitals across the country. If the perception is wrong, then there's a problem. So we have to show sincerity, impartiality, commitment in all we do. And we do not shy away from dealing with those ones that are bringing our names to this report. We don't. And that's why we have standing court marshals all over the regions. All the divisions have standing court marshals. When we have issues that have to be dealt with, we look at them, investigate them thoroughly, and we take them at the courts. The courts also follow the rules of legal system. He appealed to Nigerians to always portray the country in good light to international communities expressing optimism of a great Nigeria. Lagos State Government, Governor Babajide Sumulu will on Thursday be the state intending pilgrims' welfare as they begin their journey to the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia for the year 2024 Hajj exercise on Friday. Secretary, Lagos State Muslim Pilgrims Welfare Board, Saeed Unipade, said the governor, his deputy, Obafemi Mzat, and other government functionaries would be at the one-day seminar organized by the board as a climax to the weekend lectures and enlightenment program held across the local government areas of the state for intending pilgrims. According to him, the seminar with the theme, Achieving a Blissful, Rewarding, and Acceptable Hajj Experience, is designed to further broaden the knowledge of the intending pilgrims on the requirement of Hajj rituals and educate them on the do's and don'ts concerning international travel. Unipadi emphasized that the chief imam of Igbogo Central Mosque, Sheikh Abdurrahman Lukman, will be the guest lecturer, while the grand chief imam of Lagos, Sheikh Suleiman Abu Nola would lead other Islamic clerics in offering prayers for the state government and pilgrims to achieve a successful Hajj operation. Lagos State Government has promised to rejuvenate Scalton and basic and secondary schools in the state. Commissioner for Basic and Secondary Education, Jamu Ali Balogun, gave the assurance during an investor ceremony organized by the State Scout Council to decorate him and the Permanent Secretary, Basic and Secondary Education, Abayami Abolaji. Ali Balogun said with the federal government policy and safety in schools, if Scouting is properly grounded, it will help students on how to defend themselves when in trouble. It promised to set up a committee that will collaborate with local government and local council development areas on how to restore scouting to schools in the state. Be prepared, that's the motto. And at every point in time, if you have as many as possible of our students and people 
in scouting as a member. That issue of safety is half sought. Also speaking, the permanent secretary of the ministry, Abayomi Abolaji, expressed confidence in the group, promising to continuously support and participate in their activities even after retirement. On his part, Lagos State Scout Commissioner Adebeshin Olontoyi said the association is charged with engaging youth to be morally and spiritually productive in the society. Basically, scouting will teach you how you be useful to yourself, to your country, and to God. In scouting, we believe that there is God. And that is one thing we have missed today, that is making us to find all what we're finding in our society. Until we go back to the norms, until we go back to the reality, uh, we will not get to try. And that is why we intend to introduce scouting back into the school, for us to be able to reduce what is happening with, among the youth today. The event had in attendance students from different schools in the state and other stakeholders. The 2024 National Examinations Council, NECO, Senior Sec School Certificates Examination, SSC Internal Examinations timetable has been released. This marks the commencement of a crucial period for secondary school students across the country. With the release of the schedule, candidates and educators alike are gearing up for the rigorous assessment ahead. According to NECO, the exam will commence on Wednesday, June 19 and end on Friday, July 26, 2024. And now to the rest of the stories. President Bola Tinubu has launched a campaign to promote inclus inclusive education, skill development, and gender equity. Tinubu said the campaign focuses on health, education, economic empowerment, and gender-based violence has been launched in 15 African countries in different iterations. He noted that the initiative offered a second chance to young girls who have dropped out of school to continue their education and fulfill their dreams and aspirations. Tinubu emphasized that education is the cornerstone of national development and that when girls are empowered to pursue their dreams, communities thrive, economics prosper, and nations succeed. Security forces have reported to the Kaduna state government that troops of Operation Well Punch neutralized four bandits, including one notorious bandit leader, during fighting patrols in Kiwo local government area of the state. According to the operational feedback, the troops conducted a special fighting patrol first to Timbuku village and then projected the same to Sabo Sara, both in the same local government area. Commissioner, Minister of Internal Security and Home Affairs, Kaduna State, Samuel Aruan, said the troops neutralized two of the bandits and recovered a range of items, including a motorcycle, a mobile phone, gas lighters, tobacco, assorted charms, and polythene bag containing petrol. Aruan urged the security forces to sustain momentum towards flushing a criminal element from the area. And in foreign news, thousands of people in Canada's westernmost province of British Columbia have been evacuated from their homes as authorities warn that animal wildfire continues to grow. Cliff Chapman of the British Columbia Wildfire Service said the Parker Lake wildfire has exhibited fast growth and high fire behavior since it began on Friday at the west of the town of Fort Nelson. It comes that Canada saw its most intense fire season on record in 2023 as hundreds of wildfires burned in provinces and terrorists across the country. The massive blaze forced a thousand from their homes, destroyed entire communities, and sent animals' plumes of smoke into the United States as well as Europe. And in the sport, Ogun State Governor Dakwa Biadun has held world record holder Tobia Musha for emerging as the fastest woman in the women's 100 meter hurdles this year after running a blistering 12.40 seconds to win the first Jamaicanalytics Invitational in Kingston. The governor emphasized that her achievement has brought pride and honor not only Ogun State, but to Nigeria as a whole. He reiterated the state and wavering support for athletic career and pledged to continue providing the necessary resources and encouragement for her continued success on the global stage.
Just before we go, speed thrills but heels. Please do not drive beyond the specified speed limit. You can follow us and like all our various social media platforms. X Traffic Radio 961. Instagram Lagos Traffic Radio 961. Subscribe and watch our news and programs live on YouTube, Traffic Radio 961. You can also visit our website, trafficradio961.ng. Did you know that's all our administration? Did you know that under the solo administration, Lama launched the Lagos State Blue Box Recycling? You can get more details on the Lagos State Government website. To win the news, hear the highlights of the major stories. The Lagos State Government will continue to collaborate and support the Nigerian armed forces to ensure safety of lives and property of residents and ensure continuous economic growth of the state. President Tinubu has launched a campaign to promote inclusive education, skill development and gender equity. We also told you that thousands of people in Canada's westernmost province of British Columbia have been evacuated from their homes as authorities warn that the animal's wildfire continues to grow. And in the sport, Ogun State Governor Dakwa Biadun has held world record holder Toby Amusha for emerging as the fastest woman in the women's 100-meter hurdles this year after running a blistering 12.40 seconds to win the first Jamaica Athletics Invitational in Kingston. For contact with Newsroom, send a message to info at trafficradio961.ng. That is the news broadcast compiled by Zainab Adebeshin. I'm Sarah Adesonia. Thank you for listening.